you know, my husband hasn't been feeling well. I've been going to the hospital and, and bringing him home and then taking care of him. And that it's just not been, you know, last weekend he wasn't well. And again this weekend he's not well. I know it's just the enemy. And I hate, I hate you, Satan. I hate the enemy. He's a liar and deceiver. And the truth is not in him, my brother. Um, through it all, I'm worshiping Jesus. I know that God will raise my husband back up yeah. to his health. And whatever the case may be, whatever God decides to do, because he knows what's best. I don't. I don't know. You know, and like I was saying, Jackie said it a little while ago, but we said it earlier. Uh, sometimes things get too hard for us to handle. And there's so many things at times that I cannot handle. And I don't want to handle them. I want to. I give them to Jesus and say, Lord, this is too much for me. And then, you know, because I love my husband. I don't want to lose my husband. But I know that one of these days is either going to be me or him or both of us together that God's going to call home. And it's okay because we know where we're going. You know, we might weep for a, a, a night, but joy coming in the morning because God is our joy. God is our peace. God is our love. And, and he's everything. He's everything to us. I thank him that he's touching my husband even now as I'm speaking here in the house of God. I know God's hearing my prayers. He always listens to my prayers. God is so good to me. So very good. I cannot even begin to tell you what an awesome God he is to me. And I love him and I stay in his word. I stay in his word because his word, if it wasn't for his word, I'd be a basket case. I'd be a mean old lady. I'd be rude and words would come out of my mouth and ugly. <coughs> but if the Holy Ghost resides in me, he's inside, I better watch what I say. I better watch where I go. I better watch what I see. Praise God. Because I want to please my Redeemer. Yes. He's the awesome, almighty King of kings and Lord of all. And he's coming soon. I don't know when he's coming. He might come after I leave earth through the hole in the ground. It's okay. It don't bother me. Looking forward to the rapture, but if he comes to Calls me through the hole in the ground. Hallelujah. I'm still going to be with him. Amen. For eternity, we'll never be separated again. So I rejoice this morning. I love my husband. I love my husband dearly. I respect him. I'm one of those wives that uh, I believe in. Uh, what is it called? Uh, submission. Huh? Submission. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a very submissive wife. I believe in being submissive to my husband. If he says something rude to me or whatever, I just pray and then later on I'll bring it to him. I don't even have to bring it to him. He will come and tell me, honey, I'm sorry I said what I said to you. I didn't mean to. You don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, honey, I forgive you. And vice versa, you know. Mm -hmm. Because we do. There's times when we do say rude little things. Why? Because sometimes we don't feel good. Our body, we're sick and we're grouchy and cranky. Just leave me, leave me in my room, let me sleep to and get over this whatever it comes and be my body. But you know what? Jesus loves us, thank you or not. And I praise him this morning. I'm looking forward to the worship songs. I'm looking forward to the power of the word of God. Amen. Hit me with your best shot, Lord. <laughs> Step on my clothes, my God. I need it. Hallelujah. I praise him this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Anyone else have a testimony? testimony actually um, in the middle of the revival this past week and I really wanted to try to go every night but things you know there were just other things going on it just didn't work out but uh, other commitments or whatever but um, Friday night Thursday night or no, not Friday. we went anyway yeah it was Friday for me and <laughs> Jeanette and uh, Alyssa and I were able to go. And I'm going to tell you, it was um, it was powerful. Um, out in the open, it was hot, it was muggy, but you know God was there, and that made all the difference. Amen. And one thing that bless her, Lord. bless her, Jesus, speak to her. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. One thing I took away from that is. These three young men 
No, one of them's not as young as the other two. But anyway, these three men were out there preaching their hearts out to encourage the church, to revive the church. They were bringing revival to the church, but they were to reach the lost as well. Yeah. They were out there to reach the lost and bring revival to the church, and that's what we all need to be doing. Yes, we do. You know, and I, it, it occurred to me while we were there, Brother Tom was there. You know, they all go down to New, New Liberty. They're all members of New Liberty Church, but they all answered the call to preach recently at another revival. Not one of them was already. Brother William was already preaching. The other two answered the call to preach. And so since then, the three of them, it's like they're, they go out separately, but they also go out together. They are out about their father's business. Praise God. And they're not just sitting in a pew somewhere at the church waiting to be the next one to get up and preach. They're not just waiting for the opportunity to take over a church. They're out. They are the church. They are going out, and I'm thinking, you know, we need to be in church. Yes. That's where we get encouraged. That's where we get built up. That's where we hear the word, and we can go out through the week. Yes. But we also need to be out about God's business. We're all called to do something. Yes. And we're not all called, none of us are called to just sit here on these pews every Sunday and the rest of the week do whatever. Right. But I was just so amazed because most of the time, and not too long ago, we just had this conversation, me and some other people. Most of the time when people are, you know, they'll say, I'm called to preach. And, and they are, obviously, because you hear them preach and you know they really are. But they'll sit in a church somewhere and just wait until it's their turn to preach or wait thinking they're going to be the next pastor why aren't they out doing what they're called to do you know and that's what God was talking to me about we all have a calling why aren't we out not they why are we not out doing what we're called to do we are the church and we need to take it out of this building and be set on fire like these guys I mean they are on fire and I love every one of them. They're just awesome. I, I appreciate what they're doing because they are doing things that a lot of other people should be but aren't. Right, right. And they are reaching people. I looked around at the people that were there, and I knew a lot of them. And you know your first instinct? We're people. We're human, right? You first look around and you think, man, you know. Just, just some of the people that were there, I know their situation, their circumstances, and I was like, mm. and then God corrected me. They're here. They're here in the word, and you have no right to judge. You know, you need to let God do his work. Wow. How are they going to hear unless they come and they listen? Yes. You know, and we are quick to do that. I, I mean, I shouldn't say we. I am quick. A lot of times, I try not to be, but A lot of times I think, what's their motive for being there? You know, are they just trying to get something from the church? Or they just, you know, you shouldn't think like that. They are here to get something. Yeah. They may be here to get something totally different. But if we do what we are supposed to do, they will leave here with what they really need. Amen. So I thank God that he showed me those things. That I had the opportunity to be there. Chastise me because awesome. I want to do what he has called me to do. Yes. I want to be pleasing to God yes. and do his work, yes. whatever it may be. It may just be patting somebody on the back and smiling and telling them that they're, they're awesome they, and, and have a good day. You know, we all need to be building up the kingdom of God. And sometimes we get hung up. And this is where I was going a while ago. Sometimes we get hung up with, well, I'm called to preach or I'm called to sing or I'm called to do this or do that. And it's about a position or a title. It, it can become that way if we let it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and when we get to that place, we're not any good to God. No. We are not. 
we have to be humble and we have to recognize the only, I'm gonna tell you the only title I want is the child of the king. I am a child of the king. That's the title I want. Because that is something that Jesus promised me. And other than that, I just want to be God's child and do his will. I want to stay humble and stay in his will. Yes, certainly. But I am thankful for these guys going out. And, and the young, there's a lot of young people now that are really getting wound up and on fire for God. And that's, yeah. that blesses my heart. Yes. You know, because yes. as we get older, we're not able to do as much. No. But it blesses my heart that God is moving on people and young people are coming in and, and yeah. taking over because you that's know what? Otherwise, the church will die out. Yes. Right. Right. Anyway, I love the Lord today and I just want to be in His will. Amen, sis. Amen. 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 Anybody else have?
Don't trust you. I 
his presence or be no need to be here. Amen. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus, glorify him, and just uh, be here to say yes, Lord. Amen. Be perfectly submitted to him. Say yes, Lord. Here am I, send me. Amen. I, I was thinking a lot about that passage in the sixth chapter of Isaiah this last week. You know, Isaiah said, I saw him lifted up, exalted. He was sitting in the temple talking about God. Said, I saw him. I saw him exalted on his great throne. He said, Isaiah said, his train filled the whole temple. Amen. But wow. what God, God, we was talking about that earlier, the God that, that has done everything that's ever been done, created everything that was created, mm -hmm. and nothing was created without him, that he lives inside here now. Wow. His spirit lives not just in this church and every church, every Christian that there is in the world is he lives in them. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want to preach from Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, Thessalonians this morning from the uh, second chapter starting at the third verse and uh, I, I almost didn't even preach this morning. I felt the Spirit of God was so special yes. in this place. But there's, there's a few things that I feel like that I need to cover in this chapter. A few things that needs to be said. One of them is on tradition. Don't anybody... Don't let anybody tell you traditions are wrong. The Bible. The, I want to read the 15th chapter, a 15th verse here to start with. And that's what Paul says. It says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Uh, there's one thing I want to say on that this morning that you can't get around tradition. Even coming to church is a tradition. But the, the, eating breakfast in the morning is a tradition. It's whatever you do is a tradition mm -hmm. because it's been passed down through life uh, from some of it from the very beginning. There's a thing called evolution. Things evolve from one day to the next. And I'm not talking about human beings evolving out of the ocean. No. But humans have evolved in knowledge and progress all the way through life. And this is a tradition this morning that it got to go that way. But the thing that I'm God's speaking to me this morning on is the deceiving spirit that's in the world. Yes. To deceive anybody and everybody and to make them fall. And this deceiving spirit wants to make you doubt in your own self if it can to the extent to where you think what's the use I might as well to give up and quit. Uh, I want to start in the third verse. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, God gave me this uh, after I got here this morning. I was intending to preach from Isaiah, but when I got here and I sat down for a few minutes by myself, I felt like God didn't want me to preach from Isaiah, and he changed my mind to preach from 
last longings, and I wrote this, um, uh, started looking, and I found this, and God quickened to my spirit that this was what he wanted me to preach on this morning. Say, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fall away first, and that and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's what I want to preach on this morning. The man of sin and the son of perdition is in this world to uh, uh, do the things that the Bible says that is going to be done in this life's day. And that many people, because that iniquity shall abound, the love of many is going to wax cold. I kind of preached on that a little bit here maybe a month back about the love of many waxing cold. And uh, this last week I've heard some things that people have said about me, some of them good and, and some of them not so good. I had a a real good friend that won't come to church here anymore and I heard that he made the statement that I had some awful strange beliefs, funny beliefs and uh, I thought well that the Bible said that we'll be peculiar people <laughs> and uh, I have got strange beliefs uh, depending on where your viewpoint comes from. If your viewpoint is out there in the world or in some other denomination besides the denomination of Christ, that's the denomination that I preach is the denomination of Christ. Amen. I preach that he came here with the life, will, and testimony of God and that we're heirs and joint heirs in heaven. And if that's a funny belief or a strange belief, so be it because it's Bible. Everything that I preach, I, and I'm not here to prove anything this morning. That, that don't mean anything what anybody said. It's how I stand between Amen. me and God. Right. And I, I'm not going to waste 30 minutes preaching about what somebody said about me, I could care less. Right. <laughs> it, it's that I will be right with God Amen. this morning. Amen. But uh, the point I'm trying to make right now, this time, the end time, is not going to come unless every one of us gets hurt. We're going to have to suffer with Christ. That's what the Bible says about it. If you live for him, you suffer with him. And this morning, we need, uh, we was talking about men and women, their places in life and everything. You know the best thing that could ever happen to a man or a woman is to grow up and become exactly what the Bible says we need to be and not fall away from the word of truth because of uh, some petty stuff, uh, thing that may have happened through life. Come on. Uh, I heard uh, other things that, uh, that some people just love my preaching and my style of preaching. I'm thankful for that, but that still don't mean anything unless what I'm preaching to you is truth. Uh, I, I want to make this plain and clear this morning. I'm not standing up here to tickle anybody's ear Amen. and to make them Amen. like the way I preach. You may not like the way I preach. If I say there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, you may not like that, but it's the truth. Yes. Nevertheless, uh, I'm up here to preach the true word of God. Amen. And according to this, there's going to come Brother Bob 
a great falling away from the word of truth. Yes. And that will happen before Jesus comes back. Yes, amen. I want to make sure that what I'm preaching is because it's pleasing God. Uh, I don't want good reports or bad reports to uh, influence me in any way. I'm glad for people that like me, and I'm sorry for people that don't like me. And the, the Lord blessed me this week with a man that's been here in church one week. He came visiting me one night, and he came back the next day, and he worked on my roof. And I hope he got it started. Uh, I got it stopped from leaking. And I hope the started part. I hope it starts a relationship that he'll get into church yes. and get saved yes. and, and get right Amen. with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that soul. Oh, I thank God for who he is. I thank him for his word that we've got. Amen. I thank him for the comforter that uh, Sister Veronica was talking about when we was talking about him dwelling in here. That is the comforter that lives in here. That all oh, when things get rough, Jesus didn't come here and say, I'm coming here to prepare a way that it's just going to be a bed of roses and that you're not ever going to have any trouble in this life. But he come here, he said, I am the way. He said, the gate to that way it's really narrow. You have to enter in by the, the narrow gate. And the path is so straight, it's not got any bends or any curves in it. And that's the old way that Jesus said was the right way. I'm here to preach to you a traditional way this morning. And that is the way of Jesus Christ and, and him shedding his life blood on the cross of Calvary yes. and he died there on the cross of Calvary and looking down at the world the ones that was there that was crucifying him that was causing him to put, uh, be punished uh, uh, for something that he had never done right. uh, they was there uh, making him hurt and torturing him why because they did not like him Amen. But he said, Father, if it's possible, make this uh, cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, uh, not my will, but thine be done. I'm here to preach to you the tradition that this is talked about that's in the word of God, uh, that we need to go on with what we know is right, uh, regardless of how rough and tough things get in this life but uh, we may lose it all financially or we may lose uh, every one of our loved ones I mean uh, through the grave but uh, uh, we don't have a promise uh, I don't but I'm going to outlive my children uh, every one of them is sick uh, but I, it's in the hands of God yes, to amen. take care of them this morning of my future and my hopes of uh, uh, Brother Jim is in God this morning and what he's going to do uh, for me tomorrow. You know what? There's a statement that Jesus made. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I change not. And the uh, uh, that is exactly what I've got my eyes and my ears open to this morning. Is that no change that's in uh, Jesus Christ. That when I stand before him, and if I stand there in judgment, it's going to be a fair and a, a just judgment that I'm going to stand under. Amen. There used to be a song that uh, Margaret sung, uh, uh, please search the book again. I know that my name's written there. 
Please search the book again. It was about a young man that stood in judgment before God and he could not find this man's name written there. And he was begging him, just search the book one more time and look and see if my name's written there. I want to know for sure that my name is written in the land book of life. Amen. And I do not want this uh, time of tradition. I'm, I'm going to call the devil a devil today the same as Jesus uh, called him. He said Judas was a devil uh, from the beginning. And I'm, I'm going to call him the devil today because that's exactly who he is. Right. I, I'm not going to say that I'm worshiping him because I'm uh, preaching against him in church. I am not. I'm exposing this man's yes. tradition for exactly who he is. Uh, Amen. And the Bible says here in the last day that he's going to be revealed. Uh, uh, you can look out there in the world today, even in the church world, and you can see how that the devil is working in this world. He's out to do the same thing he was doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. And the, uh, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, how he tried to interfere and cause the things of God to not come to pass there. Amen. He is a deceiver in our day and time. He has got the power of deception. If you pay attention to him and listen to him, and let me tell you something, he'll get you down to the bottom, and when he gets you there, he'll walk all over you just as hard as you allow him to. That's right. But you, I want you to know this this morning. You've got the power over him Amen. because uh, God gave us power that uh, we could uh, run him out of our life if we want to. Yeah. All we have to do is reject the devil, uh, submit ourselves to God, yeah. and reject the devil, and he'll flee from Amen. us. And uh, there's so much in this. Uh, it says, for that day shall not come except. And I believe we're living in the except part of it right now. Except there come the falling away at first. Uh, if there's not a falling away in this day and time, I mean, uh, it seems like uh, uh, in some cases, and I'm not going to call anybody's name but sleep is more important than going to church uh, and uh, i'm talking about uh, on the sunday morning that sleep uh, uh, i mean i talk about bass boats sometimes and uh, new rifles and uh, guns uh, how that people want to get out and they want to display them and and show people of what they're getting out of that but how many people in this day and time is so proud that they've got uh, this uh, living in your heart that is the creator of the world? Uh, how many people are uh, so proud of that that you want to get out and show it off for what it is? Uh, amen, amen. I, I believe that uh, God wants us to be uh, more thankful of him then we would be a brand new automobile, a brand new home, even if we was rich enough to have a, a place that was worth multi-million dollars. Uh, if we had uh, 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 50,000 acres down in Texas or whatever it might be, uh, if we had a cattle ranch down there that could run a 10,000 head of cattle, that would be nothing compared to what I'm preaching to you. The value of this plan of salvation that Jesus Christ. Oh, if that's odd this morning, if that's a funny belief, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, give me some more of it because that's what I'm hungry for uh, this morning. I want that. 
I can't even walk without him. Hold my hand. It I, I feel so good if Brother Randy Henson would come back to church here and he'd walk up this aisle uh, just one more time and he'd come up singing that song. Yeah. That, what a blessing that that was when he came here. And he realized that uh, and, uh, none of us uh, were all helpless unless God is, is our strength. Unless he's the one that's helping us, we're helpless. That's right. Amen. 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 Our shepherd. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's such a good thing to be a Christian this Amen. morning. Amen. I love him with all my heart. Yes, sir. I love my Lord and my Savior. I love God the Amen. Father. Amen. I love the Holy Ghost this morning because that's my way to heaven that Jesus paid the price for me. Yeah. He bought my way to heaven on the cross of Calvary. And as he, he died and he said, it is finished. He met, he had brought this plan of salvation, this new covenant that we was living in. The old covenant uh, didn't work because none of us was perfect enough to live the law and not be a lawbreaker. We're all lawbreakers, even yeah. yet today. But Jesus came here with mercy and love. And wow. oh, he came here that we could have forgiveness through him and that we could ask for that and it would be done. He said uh, in the John, I believe it is, he said, I confess your sins. I believe it's in First John. I'm not for sure uh, uh, you're. If you'll confess your sins, he'll be faithful and just to forgive you. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm not going to preach anymore except on this one uh, chapter here, or this one verse here. Uh, but uh, I want to uh, uh, preach just a little bit more. It says, uh, uh, falling away first, and that man of sin uh, uh, be revealed. Uh, we're living in a day when sin is on the rampage. People are proud. I mean, they'll stand up proud and talk about what a sinner they are, even in church. Uh, and I've been guilty of doing the same thing, of uh, talking about the bad things that I used to do. I'm here to lift up the name of Jesus and glorify him. I've done bad things, but I'm ashamed of them in this day that I live now. I'm ashamed of them. I'm ashamed every time I fail God in any way. I'm ashamed if I fail to witness to people that comes to my house uh, because I feel, feel that I've failed them and I've failed God. I believe that God wants me to be a witness in a place where I'm in the midst of a neighborhood that's full of sinners up there. There's a few Christians up the creek and there's some good people up there. And I've talked to a lot of them and said, hey, uh, we've got a, a seat for you down there at church. And every one of them will promise me and say, yes, uh, one of these days we're going to surprise you. And oh, what a blessing that would be yeah. to see some of these people. Uh, line up and walk through that door, come in this place and sit down and accept Christ as their Savior. Amen. What a blessing that would be. Yeah. Each one of us have got people like that that we know that lives around us. Uh, I've got so many in my family, uh, uh, grandsons and granddaughters and great-grandsons and great-granddaughters, all oh, how like them in church. Amen. I've got black uh, black kids that was adopted, and uh, uh, some of them have got children already. And uh, Tandy uh, brought one to church not uh, uh, two or three weeks back. Uh, baby, that's uh, that's my grandson. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, whatever people thinks about it, that is my grand grandson. I've got others and. 
And then I've got other adopted uh, children, uh, grandchildren, but yet they're mine in my heart. They're mine. Do you know that God's uh, speaking to me all the time about I'm adopted? I'm not a Jew uh, by nationality, but I'm a Jew by the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ uh, uh, because I've been adopted in and I cry out the Father all the time, uh, just like he said uh, that we would have to do. I mean, Jesus came to this world uh, that the whole world could be saved if they would only accept him, the whole world could be saved. Amen, amen. I'm gonna pause there this morning amen. in saying not a one of us has anything that we need to look down to, but we've got something that we need to look up to. Amen. And that's our means of salvation this yes. morning, exactly. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Praise. Christ. Praise. I'm gonna pause there. I feel like I've preached enough this morning. Amen, God bless you. God bless each one of you. I'm so thankful for each one of you that came out this morning. We're small in number, but we're, we're large in the Lord. How many angels do you think might be encamped around this place this morning and inside of it that we can't see because that uh, we don't have eyes yet that we can see them with unless they reveal themselves to us. Amen. But if there's going to be a day come when we're going to be like they are. We're, we're going to be translated one of these days. Yes, we are. Oh, what, we've got what a future to look forward to. Amen. We've got life right now and got it more abundantly. But we've got a future that we're included in this New Testament and this new covenant that God made with the world to redeem the world. Yes. Redeem how, us. how blessed we are. This Very morning. blessed. Praise Amen. God. Okay, I'm going to close there. Amen. Uh, anybody got anything on your mind this morning? Or we stand be this way? A stand and will. Brother Jim, would you dismiss us? Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for the message that you sent our way. We pray, God, that you forgive us for we fail you. Just go with us, dear God, into our homes and help us to be alive to you. We pray for that in your Lord. Amen. Amen. Before you wait, come back tonight. Amen. Come back expecting the Lord to be here with you.